Carmoose Limestone presents ASTM D6276, also known as the Eads Grim Test, using pH to estimate the soil lime proportion requirement for soil stabilization. Carmoose, a world leader in lime production, is pleased to present this comprehensive overview to demonstrate the ASTM D6276 laboratory procedures for geotechnical engineers and geotechnical laboratory technicians. Overall, this video presentation will cover three basic principles of the testing method. The significance and use of the ASTM D6276 test, the testing equipment and procedure, and identifying the potential causes for erroneous results due to the extreme sensitivity of the test. It is important to begin by understanding and appreciating both what the test does and does not do. First, what the test does. It determines the amount of lime needed to maintain an elevated pH necessary to sustain the long-term stabilization of soil with lime. It is important to note that the test, by itself, will not adequately determine if a soil can or cannot be effectively stabilized with lime, nor will it, by itself, absolutely determine the amount of lime required for stabilization. Rather, it should be used as part of a more extensive mixed design procedure, such as the one provided by the National Lime Association. This mixed design procedure can be obtained at www.lime.org. What the test does not do is it will not provide reliable information relative to the potential reactivity of a particular soil, nor will it provide information on the magnitude of increased strength realized upon treatment of this soil with the indicated percentage of lime. Other ASTM tests are needed for a thorough mixed design. Again, we suggest that the National Lime Association's mixed design be consulted. In order to perform ASTM D6276 testing, the following equipment is required. Balance or scale for determining the mass of soil and lime. One number 40 sieve. Six 150 milliliter plastic or glass bottles with tight fitting screw caps. A proper pH meter. A drying oven. And a mortar and pestle. Additionally, we suggest a water bath suitable for storing the test specimens. A water bath containing water at 25 degrees Celsius, plus or minus one degree, helps to maintain the test specimens at the proper temperature for pH testing. Regarding the reagents and materials used in ASTM 6276, a lab technician will handle three basic substances. Type two reagent water conforming to specifications D1193. Buffer solutions to properly calibrate the pH meter, either commercially available solutions or solutions prepared in accordance with the methods. And lime, which may be either hydrated lime or quick lime. And should be fresh, meeting the requirements of ASTM specifications C977. As is true with conducting all laboratory tests, it is vital to be aware of the inherent hazards involved with the equipment and materials being used and to take the proper precautions in assuring and maintaining a safe environment. Always use the proper safety equipment, such as rubber gloves, protective eyewear, eye wash, and an approved apron. Always work in an adequately ventilated area. The best practice is to always refer to material safety data sheets, more commonly known as MSDS, for all pertinent reagents to become familiar with the proper procedures for handling or working with each particular substance. Specimen Preparation To get started, you need to properly prepare the representative soil sample. To start, the soil samples need to be dried. The ASTM spec allows for air drying or oven drying up to 60 degrees Celsius. However, our experience shows that air dried samples provide more accurate results than oven dried samples, particularly in highly plastic soils. As a precaution, it is always best to refer to ASTM D421 for the latest soil drying practices. Overall, the specimen preparation involves several basic steps, including the use of a balance to measure a minimum of 350 grams of soil. Gently pulverize the dried soil with a rubber tip pestle. Screen the soil through a number 40 sieve.
and thoroughly remix the soil that has passed through that screen. Weigh the sample again and oven dry if necessary to obtain a constant weight. Determine the water content of the sieved material following the ASTM D2216 specification. A calibrated Denver moisture analyzer or similar could be used to check the moisture content of the soil. Keep sample in an airtight container to preserve the water content until ready to run the procedure. Sample preparation of lime. Prior to preparing the lime, ensure that it meets the ASTM C977 requirement for use in stabilizing soil. When using any form of quick lime, you must first prepare it by crushing the lime to a fine powder. Crushing with a mortar and pestle will dramatically improve the reliability of the test beyond simply sieving the quick lime through a number six sieve as required by the ASTM procedure. Crushing creates a significantly more uniform product. The next stage of the test method is calibration and standardization. The current specification allows the pH meter to be calibrated using a 12.0 pH buffer solution at 25 plus or minus 1 degree Celsius, or to follow the test method described in section 11.2 of the ASTM D1293 specification to create a calcium hydroxide buffer solution which would be equal to a pH of 12.45. Carmoose, however, has found that calibration by a single 12.0 pH buffer does not offer the best results. For improved results, calibration should follow standard practice and bracket the anticipated pH. Therefore, Carmoose recommends a two-point calibration of the pH meter using both a 10.0 pH buffer solution and a 12.45 pH buffer solution. It is important to note that not all pH meters are created equal and many of the pH meters in the industry do not have the option of adding a customized buffer. To ensure the best test results, look for the following specifications when selecting a pH meter to use for this test. The pH meter should be capable of performing either a two or three point calibration and be capable of recognizing USA or NIST buffers as well as customized buffer solutions. The pH meter shall have a range of 0.00 to 14.00 pH with a resolution of 0.01 pH and an accuracy of 0.02 pH. The meter shall also have a temperature range of 0.0 to 100.0 Celsius with a resolution of 0.1 Celsius and an accuracy of 0.3 Celsius. Finally, the meter has to accept a probe rated for high solid mixtures as opposed to clean solutions. To make certain you have the proper calibration, perform the suggested two-point calibration test twice, ideally using a 10.0 pH buffer and a 12.45 pH buffer. However, in the event that you are using a meter that does not accept customized buffers, a 12.0 and 10.0 pH buffer may be substituted. Running the calibration twice and checking with a third known buffer will help to ensure that you are getting consistent results. If the results of the pH meter are not accurate or inconsistent, then there is likely a problem with the meter or buffer solution. Due to the extreme sensitivity of the test, even a small calibration error can result in lime to soil proportion conclusions that are misleading. By routinely performing this test method as a service to its customers, Carmoose has come to recognize several common situations which can cause faulty test results. Change the buffer solutions often. Once open, carbon dioxide will begin reacting with the high pH solution and alter the buffer's pH. Use a pH meter with a minimum of 0.02 pH accuracy and one capable of performing at least a two-point calibration. Keep the probe tip wet during storage. Only rinse the probe with deionized, carbon-free water and gently blot the excess water from the probe after each rinse. Warm all buffer solutions in a water bath set at 25 degrees Celsius prior to calibrating the meter. If buffer readings continue to fluctuate, it may be indicating faulty equipment or a bad buffer. 
the procedure for specimen preparation includes the following steps. Separate the prepared soil sample into five 150 milliliter bottles, each equivalent to 25.0 grams of oven dried soil. The mathematical formula for this procedure is now being shown. For example, a soil with a dried moisture of 1.73%, the moisture content of the soil used in this video presentation, water would require the addition of 25.4 grams of soil to the bottles. Actual calculations are being shown. Cap the bottles tightly. Next, add quicklime or hydrated lime at 2%, 3%, 4%, 5% and 6% of the dry weight of the soil to each bottle, respectively. The decision to use quicklime or hydrate for this testing procedure should be consistent with the type of lime that will be used for construction. Today, in most cases, quicklime is the material of choice for lime stabilization. Have a sixth 150 milliliter bottle available for further calibration. Add 2.0 grams of lime only into the sixth bottle. This sixth bottle will be used as an additional calibration check of the pH meter. At this point, it is important to draw attention to a precaution in the procedure. A very small fluctuation in the weight of the lime added could adversely affect the results. Therefore, if capable, measure the lime to the nearest thousandths of a gram as opposed to the recommended hundredth of a gram. Add 100 milliliter of CO2 free deionized water to each bottle. Recap tightly and shake the soil lime water mixture for at least 30 seconds. Continue to shake the specimens for 30 seconds once every 10 minutes for one hour. Kermu suggests that samples be stored in a warm bath set at 25 degrees Celsius to ensure pH readings will be taken at a consistent temperature of 25 degrees Celsius plus or minus 1 degree Celsius. This recommendation is due to the sensitivity of the pH measurements for this test. Quite simply, temperatures compensating pH meters are not as precise as maintaining the proper temperature. After one hour, check the pH of the lime water only mixture. It should read 12.45, with an error of not more than plus or minus 0.2 pH. If not, either the meter needs recalibrated or the lime may not be fully reactive. Caution, a failure to read a pH of 12.45 may also result if you are not using a slurry rated probe. Determine the pH of each of the lime soil water mixtures while maintaining temperature. Readings should begin immediately after the one hour post mixing calibration check and should conclude within 15 minutes. Another precaution, do not rinse the probe when measuring slurries from lower to higher pH but always rinse with deionized water when dropping in pH or prior to inserting the probe in a buffer solution. Actual pH determination. To determine an acceptable percent of lime, one of the following criteria must be met. The lowest percentage of lime in the soil that gives a pH of 12.4 is the minimum lime percentage for stabilizing soil. If no soil lime water mixture reaches 12.4, but two successive specimens yield a value of 12.3, then the lowest percentage of lime to give 12.3 can be used. If only one or no soil lime water mixture reaches 12.3, then either more specimens need to be made with higher quantities of lime or there is a calibration error. Repeat test until corrected. Once the criteria are met, the test method procedures are complete. For our soil tested in the video, 4% meets the requirements of the ASTM D6276. One final reminder, when stabilizing soil with lime, ASTM D6276 is only one part of an engineered mix design. Be sure to follow a complete mix design procedure before recommending a percent lime to a contractor or engineer. Carmoose Lime and Stone, 
a leader in soil stabilization for the construction industry, is dedicated to excellence in providing its customers quality products and services.